Hi everyone, today I'm going to be discussing what is in my shampoo because a lot of people have been asking me if I would be able to um, decipher some of these kind of unpronounceable chemicals in your shampoos and tell you exactly what they're used for. So this is not exactly a common shampoo, I get this locally. This is the Green Beaver brand that I had mentioned in my updated hair regimen video, so this is what I use most of the time. Um, so I decided to go through this because this one claims to be 99.69% um, from natural origin and then about 10% organic. The description of this says that it's biodegradable, vegan, gluten-free, and not tested on animals, and it includes sweet fern, yarrow, and carrot seed extract to add volume and shine, leaving hair feeling light and clean. So the first ingredient in here is water, so that's to be expected. The second ingredient is laurel glucoside, and um, that is a surfactant. That replaces the, low, uh, the sodium laurel sulfate or the sodium laurel sulfate that you would find in many other shampoos. So this particular shampoo is sulfate free. And basically laurel glucoside is a combination between um, a sugar and a fatty chain. So if I put up the chemical structure right there, you can see that the the sugar is the basically that hexagon right there with all the oxygens coming off of it. And that is very hydrophilic. So that um, helps it to be water soluble. And then the long squiggly thing is basically a hydrocarbon chain, which is hydrophobic. And that is um, grabbing onto oils. So basically what the surfactant does is it helps to keep this in an emulsion for one because this includes um, both oils and waters and if you were to just mix oil and water together obviously you would want to separate. So this will basically keep it in emulsion. The second thing it does is it kind of grabs onto the oils in your hair using that long chain and then it's easily um, washed away with water because of that sugar molecule on there so it does two of those things it also decreases surface tension that is basically uh, the main thing of surfactant oh the sun came out uh, that's the main thing that surfactant does and so that is kind of what contributes to um, foaming so you know making suds and bubbles um, although much less than actual SLS will give you the next ingredient in here is cocoa glucoside, and that is another surfactant basically derived from fruit sugar and coconut oil. Um, it's supposed to be the least irritating of all the common surfactants that are used in cosmetics. Uh, it's, it's said to be all natural. Next ingredient is lavandula augustifolia water, it's basically lavender water. That's how it gets its very lovely scent here. The next ingredient is cocobetaine, and that is actually short form for, if I look at my notes here, short for cocamidopropylbetaine or C-A-B-P-B -B for short. So it's derived from coconut oil, the lauric acid in, in uh, coconut oil, and also dimethylaminopropylene. So this is another surfactant, and this one is actually a zwitterion. And what a zwitterion is, is basically it's not positively charged and it's not negatively charged, it's kind of both at the same time. If I put up the chemical structure here, you can see that on a whole, the chemical um, or the molecule is actually uh, a neutral molecule however one part of it is more negatively charged and one part of it is more positively charged because that oxygen atom, atom had grabbed the the electron from the nitrogen and so that's what a zwitter ion is so it has some um, similar properties to ions however because it is neutral on a whole, it is said to be a little bit less harsh on your scalp and your hair, basically. And next on here is hydrolyzed rice protein, and this is basically a conditioner. It um, forms a coating over your hair, non-waxy coating, but it's still a coating. It helps to detangle the hair and protect the hair from any sort of um, abrasion, any sort of damage from sheer forces, basically. And um, it's used in a lot of I would say repair products, you know, products that claim to sort of fill in the little holes in your hair and and seal up split ends, although nothing can really uh, permanently heal damaged hair. Uh, obviously, you would have to cut off split ends eventually, but this helps to basically strengthen the hair shaft and make it more resistant to further damage. The next ingredient in here is glycerin. Now, glycerin is found in everything. It's also known as glycerol. Uh, if I put up the structure here, you can see that it has three alcohol groups in it. If you took high school chemistry class, you would probably be most familiar with it um, being the backbone of triglycerides. So it's made by your body, it's used in your body in several metabolic pathways, so it's not exactly toxic for you. That said, 
if you were to drink a jug of this, you would probably get liver damage since it's it's being digested as an alcohol, so I probably wouldn't recommend you do that sort of thing. Anyways, glycerol being highly hydrophilic is a humectant. And so basically, whatever it binds to, it will draw water into it. Um, glycerin is also very highly viscous, so it will stick to your hair. Um, despite being extremely hydrophilic, some glycerin will still stick to your hair even after you're rinsing out. Um, so it will basically take the moisture from the air around you and draw it into your hair shaft and I will actually do a video uh, later on explaining the differences between like humectants and conditioners and oils and all those different sorts of things because it can get a little bit confusing with the terminology but basically all you really need to know is glycerin being a humectant draws moisture into the hair other things in here, uh, Helianthus anus seed oil is basically sunflower oil. Um, Borago officinalis seed oil, I think that's star flower. Next in the ingredients is vinegar and uh, obviously it's an acid, it has a low pH. Basically what it does is it works to neutralize a pH um, in the shampoo and also in your hair. Because a lot of cleaning agents, a lot of soaps tend to be very alkaline, they have a high pH. And when your hair has too high of a pH, it, um, it can raise up the cuticle of your hair, it can raise up the scales, and that makes it, um, you know, not look quite as smooth, and, and it also uh, exposes the inner parts of the hair to the elements out there. So basically, um, what the vinegar does is it lowers the pH in here, it helps to neutralize the pH of your hair, so those cuticle, that, that cuticle layer will basically lay flat, it helps to make your hair shinier. Um, vinegar is also clarifying, so it can uh, strip the waxes off of your hair and your scalp and reduce um, scalp flaking depending on what's causing the flaking in the first place. If it has anything to do with product buildup, it can help with that. Um, but if it's more of a fungal thing, it can take more than just a little bit of vinegar to help clear that up. Next up is Anthemis nobilis flower water. That's basically chamomile, it's soothing. Um, Ledum groenlandicum water. The, groenlandicum is basically uh, rhododendron, so it's more, more flower juice. <laughs> it's basically tea. Comptonia peregrina water, that is the sweet fern that they had mentioned before. Uh, Kilia millifolium extract, that is the yarrow that they had mentioned in the description. Then we come to lavender oil, rosemary oil, carrot seed oil. These are all basically emollients. So um, they don't draw moisture into the hair, but it makes the hair feel softer and it seals in the moisture. Once the humectant actually draws moisture into the hair shaft, um, the oils basically seal it in and prevent the moisture from escaping. So. It can be seen as a moisturizer, but it's not the moisturizing part of the moisturizing. It's the keep the moisture in part of the moisturizing, if that makes sense. And coming to the very end of this list here, these are the ingredients that are usually only present in trace amounts, like 1% or less of the total volume of the um, shampoo. So PCA ethyl cocoyl arginate. Uh, this is basically another protein-based conditioner, um, arginate it's a derivative of the amino acid arginine and so it basically uh, helps to protect the hair again and also reduces static. Um, xanthan gum, this is a, an extremely viscous material once you actually like put it into water. So it's used as a thickening agent, once again um, another emulsifier to help, separ to help prevent the separating of these different components in this. Xanthan gum is also known as food additive E415 and technically you can get it from um, natural sources. It's a polysaccharide that you can uh, basically make from um, fermentation of sugars. Next up is sodium levulinate. This is the one ingredient in this whole list that is not actually um, derived from a, a, any sort of natural source. So that would be the uh, 0.3% of this shampoo that is not of natural origin. That is synthesized in the lab, basically made from table sugar and hydrochloric acid. And it's a preservative. It is used um, to keep the amount of bacteria and microorganisms down in this shampoo since it has so many other natural ingredients in here, a lot of oils and sugars that microorganisms would probably want to munch on and make this all nasty. So um, 
that sodium levulinate will keep that down. Potassium sorbate is a salt basically derived from sorbic acid, which you can find naturally in berries, and also potassium ion. And this is another sort of preservative. It's added in a lot of foods as well, actually. Um, it is food additive, let's see, uh, E202. And this is more of a antifungal agent as opposed to antibacterial agent. So you'll find this in a lot of um, fermented drinks or fermented foods, um, wine, ciders, things like that, also in yogurts to keep the amount of fungus down so it prevents the growth of mold and yeast. And the very last ingredient in here is citric acid and this is everywhere. I mean you find it in lemons, you find it in you, um, it's a metabolite of you know gly glycolysis and um, you can use it in a, like a ton of different metabolic processes in your body. You, your body makes it, it's not gonna hurt you. Um, it is an acid so it helps to lower the pH in your shampoo, in your water, in your hair. Um, it can act as a water softener, so having shampoo with citric acid can help your hair kind of deal with hard water a little bit better since it chelates some metals out of the water. Um, it's also a clarifying agent. It helps to strip the waxes from your hair. It helps the cuticle to lay flat so your hair is really shiny, which is why anytime you do a lemon juice mask on your hair, your hair is always kind of, kind of feeling a little more smooth and shiny and everything. And citric acid had been replaced um, in a lot of shampoos by EDTA. You would uh, find it as like disodium EDTA in um, in other shampoos, that's basically a salt. Uh, it is a more effective water softener, but um, obviously it's not natural. And so this shampoo uh, tries to be as natural as possible. So if you'd like me to do another one of these what's in my shampoo episodes, except using, I guess, a quote unquote bad shampoo, um, leave a comment down below and recommend a certain brand because I don't really do a whole lot of shopping for different shampoo brands. Um, but I hope this helped to clarify oh, <laughs> clarify a lot of the, um, the, I guess, big, scary, unpronounceable names in the ingredients list. And you realize that even though they are unpronounceable, a lot of them are natural. It's just basically like the Latin botany names of plants um, and so they're really not all that scary probably other shampoos would have scarier stuff in here but I hope you enjoyed this hair episode and that you learned something new and I will see you in a few days for the next corset video bye